Hey Lit Set, it's Jasmine. Hey Lit Set, it's Nikea. And this is Black Girl Lit, the podcast. We're a podcast now, guys. Where Black girls are lit, we get lit, and, and we, we read lit. lit. This is Black Girl Lit, the podcast. Lit Set, we're back with another episode of Black Girl Lit, the podcast. This is episode two, right? Three. It- it's three. Oh, three? We've read three books? Yeah. Yeah. Took- We've been slacking in our pippin. Yeah, we have. We have. It's it's only three. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was only two. I didn't know we were um that deep into things because it's been taking us like a month to read a book. And usually we can read a book in a week and a half. You know, I, but then I was like, is that because of the books or is that just because of our own life stuff? I'm going to chalk it up to both. So... <laughs> Uh, I'll take that. So this is Jasmine's pick, episode three, book three, season four. Um, this book was sent to us by another bookstagrammer, I guess you can say, um, the liberated lobby, the liberated lobbyist, literary lobbyist, the there liberator, the liberator lobbyist. <laughs> She's the a liter- liberator. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, y'all. They they talk to Jazz. You know, she's our social media manager, so. She handles all that. And this book is The Other Americans by Felice Laverne. When I first said her name, I called her Felice Laverlene. <laughs> I was like, I tried to make it so super fancy, but no, it's <laughs> to the point. I like Laverlene though. <laughs> I like Felice. This reminds me of like your wedding aesthetic. Very like great guest. It does. And I, I like that. I like this Art Deco vibe of it. Yeah. Look at actually right look at me with the folded yeah. page the book won't close look, i had to go like this i had to start holding it like this at yeah. one point because i was like this is yeah <laughs> this is hard to hold I need this, is, hand. this is the first physical book that both of us have read like yeah. usually jazz is straight kindle and you know back in the day before COVID, i was um going to the library but mm-hmm. i converted nikea over to being a digital reader Okay, I worked really hard to <laughs> incept that idea into her brain, and <laughs> and now look at her. She's a digital reader. But yeah, this is yeah. the first physical book I've read since at least 2010, so. Yeah, it was hard for me. I've been doing a lot of audio books and Kindle books, and it's been rough reading this book just to hold it. As just Jazz to hold said. it. It's my wrist <laughs> is not strong in the early days. So <laughs> like, and I was like, I can't hold this it. This book weighs a pound. I looked on Amazon. It weighs a pound. Oh, wow. It's a yes. thick. She's thick. Yeah, she is. Yeah. But um, let's get into the thick of this novel. Oh, well, we need to check in. I don't even know. Jess, how you doing? You know, I'm doing okay, girl. You know what I'm saying? Trying to plan this wedding. You know, I can't believe that we will be married in four months. Like, time is freaking flying by. Yeah. November I, I gotta 6th. Get my- I gotta get my bridesmaid's dress. We'll make four months. Yeah, y'all supposed to order them, I think, this week. But yeah, you know, just trying to plan the wedding. We did our decor meeting. It's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna be so gorgeous. Um, and now we're about to just order invitations. So that's just me. My, my main focus right now is working and wedding planning and then reading on the side. Reading on the side. <laughs> <laughs> reading on the side side. Right. <laughs> Hey, I get it. I get it. How about you, sis? How you doing? I'm doing good. I was just speaking of wedding plan. I just told EJ. I was like, I don't want to be a bridesmaid again. It's work. It's hard work. I said, you can't do this for somebody you don't like for real, for real. (laughs) Bro. Baby. I was up late last night doing something. I can't tell Jazz what I was doing, but I was up late last night doing something in relation to the wedding. And I was working hard. In my defense, I have not asked my bridesmaids to do anything besides get their dress and show up. Any work that they has been put on to them has been put on to them by themselves. Okay, maybe my maid of honor has been putting the work on y'all. You need to check that out with her. But yeah. I personally, <laughs> as the bride, am not a bridezilla and have not put out any work on these girls. So I don't want folks thinking out here, ooh, Jasmine, a bridezilla, she making her bridesmaids work. No, I'm not. I just told them bitches, get the dress and show up. Okay? No, I- she... <laughs> <laughs> that's all i asked for okay? okay she's not making us work it's just the duties of a bridesmaid it's a lot i was like "Ooh, chile because <laughs> i've i've been a bridesmaid before well i was a junior bridesmaid um in 2008 and then in 2000 
2010 ish 2011 ish i was a bridesmaid but i was like a last minute bridesmaid for somebody Mm -hmm. i'm always a last minute bridesmaid and then in 2016 i was a last minute bridesmaid for somebody else so i never really had to like be from beginning to end so yeah it's a lot but i mean it's i can't wait to see the finished results but it's it's work it ain't no joke to be somebody's bridesmaid and if you were gonna be the bridesmaid you really day friend um but on a personal note um i'm planning a birthday party <laughs> so my birthday already happened <laughs> but me and my daughter share a birthday if y'all don't know so i'm planning a grown and sexy birthday party i keep telling everybody for the attire i want to see ass and titties mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. yeah planning that and uh, me and my husband out here starting businesses and stuff and getting yes. LL llc's we have two of them now so okay. <laughs> so and Mind your own marriage yes we are official vendors for north carolina agriculture and technical state university's homecoming mm -hmm. all right we're done checking in and blabbing i guess jess you look really pretty oh thank you girl you know yes. i really the hair, it's, you know, it's, I didn't really do nothing to find you know. I I just, I just quickly curled the hair, you know, took about fifteen mini, and then I put a little concealer and uh, powder under my eye. Me too, girl, cause they be. I got they, like they was dark deep eyes. Yeah, <laughs> they was sunken and dark. So the shadows, yeah, they was real. But um, thank you, girl. You know, for you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, y'all. We're gonna get into this first segment which is about the author of The Other Americans. Mm -hmm. The Other the other Americans, wow. The Other Americans. <laughs> the, them you. other folks. <laughs> right. So I looked up Felice Laverne and I couldn't find anything about her. So I'm gonna read what's on the back of the book here. So it said, Felice Laverne is the creative and editorial director of the Art and Deco Agency and a renowned book editor. She is a graduate of Georgia State University and King Kingston University in London. Her essays and short fiction have been published in Padmore Culture and Kingdoms in the Wild, respectively. She now lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, but was born and raised in the South. The Other Americans is her debut novel. And I did see on her Instagram, she's like a she, like I said, she's an editor and she's like an agent and she represents other writers. So I thought that was dope. So she's done that before and now she has written her own novel. All right, y'all. Jazz is about to flourish and thrive because she's going to synopsize The Other Americans by Felice Lover. So y'all, come along with me while I synopsize this book. Okay. So The Other Americans is a story of this um, elite Black family. They are the Dessoms. Okay, I don't know if that's the correct way to pronounce the last name. That's how the website told me how to pronounce it. So that's how I've been pronouncing it, Dessoms. It's a French name, D-E-S-S-O-M-M-E-S, -S 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 -S, so Dessoms. Anyways, just, they are an elite Black family. Um, I think it's in Atlanta. They are have the Dessoms group which I think is like a, an entertainment company and they're conglomerate and they do acquisitions and all that great stuff. It was giving me, it gives you um, dynasty. If you watch that television show, think of the Carringtons, but black. Um, the story is told from four perspectives. It's told from Delaney, who is married to Vincent Disomes, uh, Jillian, who is Vincent's younger sister, Aaliyah, who is Delaney's friend, and then Nigel, a guy who kind of comes into the story. And the high level view of the story is just the messiness within this family and their uh, inherent need uh, to stay elite and what they are willing to do to make sure that they stay an elite family. Um, and that is the very, very high level view of the other Americans. Oh, but I do want to mention that the book um, is kind of tied into W.E.B. Du Bois' The Talented Tenth um, and has some references to that. And I think that was some inspiration for this story. Good job. I didn't know how you're going to synopsize because the one thing I got on the website and on the back of the book is so long. I was like, ooh, cha. So long. Like all of it from here to here is a synopsis. Right. On the back of the book. It's, it's deep. Book. Heavy, heavy. It is deep. Heavy, heavy. Every so heavy, heavy. Yeah, yeah. Come 
Okay. <clears throat> Every episode, we can't get away from it. Okay. All right, y'all. Now, next segment, we are going to give you our initial reactions, just how we felt about the novel. Not giving you our overall feelings, but just some guttural feelings. Yeah, so since it's my book, I will go first. So, um... I have one I really appreciated that there is a family tree in the front of the book because they would talk about some people and or they would name someone and I would be like I don't remember who that is so like as soon as you open there's like a little mini family tree right here like page two before you get to the right there so I appreciate that because I was like who and then I want to go back and see who they were in the family tree Um, and then I feel like I need to read The Talented Tenth by W.E.B. Du Bois just to have some understanding of what, you know, the references, or not really the references, but I guess what was an inspiration for this. Um, I had to Google, there's a term, I think it's like, I don't know, super early in the book, brought up see, brought up see. And I was like, what is brought up see? And it was like something about like basically how you were brought up with. And then I, I was really that word as to why Aaliyah's parts were kind of written as like scenes from a stage play. Same. I was so as to why Aaliyah's parts were written as stage plays or stage play scenes. They were yes. like, says, I'm confused. Because yes. it would go scene and Aaliyah is doing this. And I'm like, couldn't you just write this in normal script or normal third person or whatever person you want to write this in? Yeah. Um, and then also this family, OMG, y'all <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's a reaction that encompasses a lot of reactions it was just i wanted to cuss everybody out <laughs> everybody everybody was gonna get cussed out in these hands and those are my reactions because i just i'll talk about a little bit more in some of the scenes and topics but yeah it was too mm-mm. how did you feel <laughs> um so some of my reactions the quotes at the beginning of each section to me, mm-hmm. were like amazing and like thought provo- provoking. Mm-hmm. So I think it was in three parts. So I have like notes at the beginning of each little part because the quotes were like, like they were really good. Like they were thought provoking. I like a book that makes me think. So, you know, my little brackets. There are so many details and things are over explained. And I wrote, I put this on page 142 <laughs> on my little sticky note. <laughs> And I'm like, why? Like, it was just, I'm like, it's too much. We don't need all of this. That's why I had to keep referring to the family tree because she was give a lot of background story or background information to one situation. And no names. Right, no names. Or she threw in some names. One time she was talking about Paige and Pilar. And I was like, who the hell is Paige and Pilar? Right. So I had to go back and see if I missed this section or something. But yes, a lot of details. Mm-hmm. Sorry for cutting it off. You're fine. And then there are a lot of things that are left unanswered. I had a lot of questions that need answers. Like literally my notes, usually I write like, oh, this is cool. But a lot of my notes are like questions, which I'll get Mm -hmm. into in the major scenes and topics. But it's like, does so-and-so do this? Is this going on? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, why do I have so many questions? And they never got answered. Mm -hmm. Um, Never. As Jazz mentioned in relation to like the family tree, like the relationships were confusing. I didn't know who was who. At one point, I thought Nigel was their brother, was mm-hmm. the Dassault's. At the mm-hmm. like the, his first section, I thought he was a brother. Um, then, honestly, for me, um, Aaliyah was irrelevant. Essentially, did not like the way her sections were written. Like Jazz said, I was like, why? Like she's not a dramatic person. I'm like, why? And then all these stage directions, I would skip over the stage directions and go straight to the dialogue because yeah. I'm like, I don't need this. Mm-hmm. And um, I was able to pull out some good quotes and moments from the novel. Good. I will say in terms of Aaliyah, I think at least I thought that she was going to kind of be like this voice of reason character for Delaney, mm-hmm. but I still didn't see the relevancy. Yeah. Like, But I liked that. her as a character, as a person, but I don't know how she fit into the Two. overall thing. Okay. All right, y'all, that's our reactions. Now we're going to go into major scenes and topics. You start with your major scenes. I want to know what you have. Okay, um, so... <sighs> I have Micah and Delaney at the coffee shop. 
Mm -hmm. And then also Michael, not Michael, Micah and Delaney at the fundraising gala. Then we have um, Aaliyah. My scene is Aaliyah getting passed over from her job or for her job um, mm -hmm. to be the lead of like some project. Um, Vincent sexually assaulting his sister, Jill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jill's mother disowning her, that whole scene towards the end. Oh, also Paige having an abortion because of her family's like status, even though it was against her own um, social, like her own values actually. Mm -hmm. And then the topics I had, there's so many topics, but obviously colorism, sexism, elitism, mental, sexual, and physical abuse, double consciousness, which is a concept that was developed by Mr. W.E.B. Du Bois himself, um, manipulation and control, money, power, respect, and then mm -hmm. family ties. Mm, okay so uh scenes i have pretty much all the same scenes that you have mm -hmm. um i was really we'll get we'll dive into it, but the vincent and jill shit yeah that was yeah. um so topics i have i have the american dream what does that even mean um colorism uh entitlement or elitism sexual assault and then also self-harm because self-harm yeah. is talked about in reference in the, in the novel as well with jill um as well as the family traumas um yeah yeah that scene i didn't realize how early it was in the book i had it i have it dog-eared right here it's on page 59. yeah it's really yeah it's really early i wasn't <laughs> um when i got to it and i was reading it and i was like wait a second i wrote no 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 this is wrong <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Yeah. And then, like, um, like, okay. So just about Vince's character. He I I trash. Trash person. Whatever. Right. Complete garbage. He's yeah. the oldest son. Ah, the by oldest the way. son and is constantly vying for his father's and mother's attention and you know, daddy look at me, daddy look at me kind of thing is what was childhood was like. But his a, attack on his sister, which I wasn't shocked that he would attack someone because he has the sense of a title, but he feels like he can have whatever he wants. But for you to feel like you can have your sister in that kind of way is mm -hmm. absolutely and utterly disgusting. Like, yeah. I was I was appalled. And then at the end, when it's brought back up and Jill's having this conversation with her mother and her mother's just kind of like, no, we'd rather just kick you to the curb and stick with, keep with him. Like, yeah, I have a lot of notes on that page. I was just like, <laughs> I said, I wrote, Vincent is nasty. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I said he definitely has mental health issues. Like, what? And I guess it's just the way his parents raised him. And I think it goes back to me mentioning, like, family ties. Like, they raised him to be, you know, to feel like he's better than everybody else. He deserves whatever he wants to get. And this had me thinking, like, is this the only time that this happened? Has it happened? Mm. Has it happened since then, or has he done mm -hmm. it to other people? Because like initially reading just seems like a regular, you know, uppity rich dude. Mm -hmm. But you read this scene, I was just like, oh no, it just it made me uncomfortable. It did. It me really too. Did. Me too. I'm happy it stopped where it stopped, but it mm -hmm. definitely still it was it yeah. was really uncomfortable to read and then it, I mean but it does give you some context into Jill's resentment and feelings towards her family and kind of how she her with it she lived her life as an adult yeah kind of understand that a little bit more but still um also the colorism in the novel was annoying and disgusting <laughs> as well. um, but it's funny because I in my mind all these people are like my complexion at least or darker like mm -hmm. they're brown skin people i don't see them as light skin because the fact that they all like they had a certain like the paper bag test like but it was just i was like really really like with the whole coming out dinner with delaney like how she mm -hmm. had to, be to the family and stuff yeah you know i used to think that i wanted to be um i will say one of the things about this novel is like i really made me call into question like the american dream and how i feel about black elitism or just elitism in general like i love to be wealthy but i don't want to get so wealthy to the point that i forget myself who i am and i'm more so concerned with the image of my family than right. actual family 
like the way that they were going about things and basically how it was kind of alluded to that they would marry cousins if it wasn't taboo just to keep that lightness and yes. their the complexion <laughs> within the family I no, no thank you I if that's what it means if that's what I have to do to be extremely wealthy no thank you and I think that goes into mm-hmm. talk about um like elitism and the sex they had a lot of isms and the elitism oh. and the sexism are rampant through this mm-hmm. novel and it makes me think about Delaney because Delaney went to Spelman she went to graduate mm-hmm. school and then as soon as she marries Vincent she doesn't even work Nope. And she's expected to like be at home and to take care of the family business and you know not even use her degree and follow her passion which is something that she wants to do but because mm-hmm. she's a part of this family and this society and the disown she has to I guess this is mentioned later on that she has to put on this mask and that kind of relates to the double consciousness as well she puts on this mask for them and performs for them and then she can come home and kind of let loose but then she says like after a while it's like it no longer becomes a performance she's forgotten about her old self I think her maiden name was like Coker or something like that yeah Coker yeah and so she you know Delaney Coker is gone it's only Delaney disowns and she's fully taking on this other person she tried to consolidate consolidate the two but now she is what they want her to be how they view her which is how double consciousness is like black people living in America and you only see yourselves through someone else's lens you don't see yourself through your own lens I struggle like I like I got it a, a, a little bit of Delaney having to kind of conform to kind of like the family a little bit like some you come into a new family you have to learn their traditions and how they operate and stuff but to the extent and point of what she did it was just I don't know and I think also it was just a uh there were several times where I felt like she could have advocated for herself a little more or spoke up or but just out of fear or you know not wanting to embarrass Vincent she just kind of goes along with it and like you said, just kind of loses herself in that. And I just, I think that's crazy. To me, that was one of the most relevant parts of the novels where she was talking to Micah, I think it was on the phone, but she just finally admitted like, like this is what's going on. Cause I feel like the whole novel, page 255, I said, this is the most relevant part of this entire novel, double consciousness. And, I, oh, this is the scene where um, Micah and Delaney are talking at the gala <laughs> and she get butt booty naked. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> outside in the parking lot she is butt booty naked in front of this dude she's only met twice prior to this situation but let me read these quotes page 255 laney says after a while you don't see yourself anymore you see them you see yourself through their eyes through others eyes you adjust to fit what they expect pluck and mold yourself to fit into that little glass case this idea that you can do both can have both it causes the separation inside of you. Being you gets put on the back burner for one night. You become this object, this item, this entity that even you don't recognize. And like Jazz said, I think now, like reflecting and talking about the scenes, I need to go read The Talented 10th, which I'm sure I've read parts of in grad school, but, you know, read it in its entirety to really see, like, what she based this on. Because now I forgot that it was based on that, and now reflecting back on it, I'm like, oh it kind of put some pieces together for me no i definitely do want to read the talents of tens i think it will help provide additional context to me and the understand these characters a little bit more i had very high hopes for delaney at the end on her relationship with vince but i still feel like there's some questions left unanswered on the results of that what happens here i don't i don't know i mean one thing I will say about this book, it's not tied up in a bow, that's for sure. So <laughs> you're like, what? Where do we where do we go from here? Is the question. I don't know. Aaliyah losing her job. Yes. I just have my <laughs> own like light bulb moment. I, the real reason why Aaliyah was mad at Micah is because he was playing into the system and not fighting against it to help others. He was only doing things that would benefit himself along. Um because I think they were the only two black people in the company, but she lost her F and S when um, she did not get that position that she had been working night and day for. And now I'm like, I was I was happy for her in that moment. I'm glad she like lost her stuff. Cause that reminded me of the episode mm-hmm. of Girlfriends where Joan was getting talked over. Mm-hmm. She called William out on his stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. Sometimes you just gotta show your ass. 
I think the the thing about this like this book and also just like this the world that we are kind of currently and just in general like this idea that you know we're supposed to or you should pull somebody up with you and bring someone along with you if you're advancing then you should be helping to advance to the people as well and that's not saying that you have to help the entire black community but if you know a black person that you know you're close with you know mentor them or sponsor them in some way to help them get to where you've gone or you know open up doors or hold doors open for other people and i think something that we see far too often is that people make it but they close the door behind them and i like rich i like her style <laughs> they close the door behind them and you know okay that's fine if you if you're not able to hold the door open for me at least open a window sis you know, find a back door or something for me to go through a rope ladder out the window for me or something. Find another way to help bring some pick somebody up. So I can definitely understand at least issue with Micah because he, hey, I made it. If I can make it, you can make it kind of thing. And that's not always the case. Right. Um, we are not in a place where equity is equal in this world so you may you have to step outside of yourself a lot of times to help bring someone up i know that in my life and my roles as a manager or as a recruiter I, I tried to bring up people of color as much as possible with me that was my focus that was my goal I'm not saying that i wasn't doing that for my employees who were not black but i was trying to equal that equity as much as possible with things i could control i would do the best that i could and i think that's something that also just kind of comes in like on social media and this whole idea that everybody broke and if you ain't got no broken bag you broke and i'm like but <laughs> no i just i don't know i went on a tangent there yeah. behind the willie lynch letter it's the premise behind it and red ants and black ants they don't bother each other but you put them in a jar and you shake them up nothing's gonna happen and then you, you pour them out on the ground and then they all start fighting each other because they think that each other is the enemy when in all actuality the enemy is actually the person that's shaking the jar we need to see who's shaking the jar like they got us fighting about left and right black versus white mass versus anti-mass like we need to look at who's shaking the jar and i think that's a big thing with like Aaliyah's situation like who's shaking this jar up sis you don't need to be mad at him you need to be mad mm -hmm. at the system yeah i like that because now, now that I start looking at it, like, shaking the jar is in every aspect and so many different lives. Mm -hmm. um, for the world as a whole, for different racial groups, for religious groups, um, within the Black community itself from a colorism standpoint. Respectability politics and how folks, folks feel like, oh, I'm an educated Black person. I'm not going to be oppressed like you because you're a ghetto. Like, no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's not you to say you know, that's how they, they they don't say it in those terms but that's kind of how they imply it but i think that's really interesting like it is the system that is got us all fucked up okay guys it's not each other it is the system now i will say racist that's you that's you that's not the system racist people that's just you okay you were what's wrong so we don't have any sips so i'm gonna sip on my drink on to the segment that you all have been waiting for, the reason why you're here. We are going to rate this book. Um, if you all don't know, we've added a rating to our rating scale. So, you know, we have sober, buzz, tipsy, then faded. And if y'all watch my quick lit, by myself, I said, Fade it reminds me of when you've been drinking and then somebody pass you a blunt and you take a little ooh. hit and just, ooh, that and your hit. journey. Hello, okay. <laughs> and then, of course, we still have lit. So, Jazz and I are on Goodreads and all the ratings, even on Amazon, they're five stars. So, we're mm -hmm. like, we only have four. So, we need to add that fifth one in there just to balance things out. So, there you have it. We have Faded in there. And yeah, we're about to write this book. Jazz, it's your book, so you get to go first. Hey, it's my book. It's my book. It is my book. All right, so I'm going to be honest with y'all. I struggled to read this book. One, physically, because it's a physical book, and I couldn't hold it. And two, it was just a lot of detail. It was just a lot. And I just, I, I had to force myself to stop doing other things to read, and that's never good. I was playing The Sims way more than I was reading, okay? So based on that, now, I think the plot, I think some of the drama and the stories, I think they could definitely 
it's great. I love reading stories about rich, messy white. Oh, no, he's not white, but I love reading stories about rich, messy families. Okay, I just love it. It's just like yes, you you have all the wealth and you're still a mess. Yes, I, I like reading those kind of stories. That being said, I had to rate this book a bust. That's how I am feeling. Um, it could have been sober. And it could have also been tipsy, but it just, it didn't give me, it, it was a, a whole lot of something, but also nothing at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just how I feel about it. I just, I think for me personally, but I will say though, I will say a good shining light is that at the back of the book, there are questions It's for book club questions, which we didn't read any of these book club questions, but there are book club questions at the back of the book. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at them so, questions. I was like, they so basic, bye. I'm not in high school. Nikea, yeah, how would you rate this book? I gave this book a sober. Okay, okay. Because I was talking cash trash about it the whole time. And I don't even know if I, hey, Gatsby. <laughs> Shout out to Gatsby. I, could, I don't even know if I can say I could read the book. Because about, I could read while I'm in drinking. You could read I don't even know if I can say that I read the book in its entirety because there were some parts I just skipped over the dialogue. I, mean, I skipped over like the filler stuff and I just read the dialogue because I was like, I didn't really need it. And, you know, even my husband was like, yeah, you went to school. You know how to skim. <laughs> I literally skimmed some sections. There was stuff that I mm -hmm. skipped over. Although we did pick out some good stuff. For me, it's a sober just because of the whole cohesiveness cohesiveness mm -hmm. of the novel was not there for me. It didn't all fit together. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was very flat. Like I kept telling my husband, I was like, it's just, it went like this. Mm -hmm. There was no climax. There was nothing. Like it was just stuff happened. And then it was just like, also, like I mentioned before, the fact that I felt like it was re written in some secret language that only the characters and the author could understand that was frustrating to me because I had so many questions that needed answers and I didn't get them and then the fact that spoiler alert the fact that Aaliyah got in a car accident and probably died and I'm just like what was the point of that like the freak I was like you know what I'm gonna have to get this a sober like the the way we were able to talk about it is pretty lit but just the book is, in and of itself is very sober and during the time that I read this book let's see I finished <laughs> training school for negro girls left behind book one on audiobook swing on audiobook Tyler Johnson was here on audiobook and casting the first stone on audiobook so I finished five other books before I finished this one and I just finished this one today this morning yeah so that's how we feel about it um I think I was a little bit more generous towards the book than you, mainly <laughs> because, full disclosure, I, like you, skimmed through quite a portion of it. So I felt like maybe those sections I missed were, you know, good sections. So that's why I tipped the scale on to the buzz side, because I don't, I don't know for sure. So I was being a little bit generous. But everything you said, I completely agree with your sentiment. Um, I, it, there's, like, the certain sections, like, I was expecting, even though it happened so early in the book, I was expecting, okay, after the sexual assault, something crazy is going to happen and the, you know mm -hmm. you can't have a scene like this and, and not have some climax stuff afterwards but no it just mm -hmm. is a flat plain trail like we're just driving through the great plains of america just flat you know, line just <laughs> flat line flat world and flat land it was just flat so mm -hmm. i understand your your your, your rating yeah. And Overall, the content is good, but just as a cohesive. It's cohesive. I really said the plot, the idea behind it, um, some of the stuff. I mean, if it was executed, I think it and how would it need it? It just wasn't executed properly. I think mm -hmm. it could have been a. It could be a cool show to watch. I love. Like I said, it's like it's giving me. Like I said, Dynasty that has yeah. not kind of vibes. I think it could be a dope show with all the messiness, but in this format as it is right now all right y'all that's it for the other americans by felice laverne so y'all got any feedback input let us know how you feel about the book were we totally wrong was it over our heads did we miss something let us know drop down in the comments let us know, let us know. um but we do have another book coming up which i know it's gonna be good because i've been reading this dude since i was in middle school and i shouldn't have been reading I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm let you know right now. I'm really excited about this next book. I know it could be kind of cliche because this is one of the top black authors that everybody pretty much knows. Urban, that urban fiction genre. 
<laughs> yeah, but I haven't read one of his books in some time. I remember yes. reading um, Naughty or Nice, and I absolutely loved it. No, I'm here for this next book. I think yes. this next book will redeem us because we have been <laughs> it's been pretty, rough. pretty. It's been pretty rough. I used to say I was a fast reader, but I can't even I can't even claim that no more. <laughs> girl, girl. So if y'all can tell, we're reading a uh, novel by a man. I think the last book I read by him was Genevieve. Oh, Genevieve was good. Oh. Yes. So good. Um, but if you can't tell by now, it's Eric Jerome Dickey, and it's one of his newer novels, The Business of Lovers. So I was like, mm -hmm. let's not, let's throw a man in there. Okay, he's mm -hmm. black. You know, give us a thumbs up, like it, leave us a review, let us know what you think. Come to our Instagram, DM us, tell us that, you know, we tripping and we don't know what we're talking about with this book. I we mean, could be. We could be. I, I am open to dialogue and for yes. people to tell me, you know, hey, this is the perspective. This is why I feel this book was, you know, good or whatever the case may be. We are open to that. You know, these, everything that we say on this is our personal opinion. We are right. not experts in the field. Mm -hmm. I am not an author. Okay. So I don't know what it means to even write a book like this. So <laughs> I'm just saying, this is my personal opinion right. as a reader. Yes. So, you know, come talk to us. Let us know. Okay. And maybe I'll read this book again once I become um, handsome and wealthy. I'm going to read this book again to see if I really understand it. Because, you know, yes, read The Business of Lovers. Check out our Instagram. It'll be on the screen. Our email, our website. Buy merch. Maybe we'll have a Black Friday sale so y'all can buy up this stuff that's sitting in my garage. Do you have anything for the good of the order? Um, you know what? I don't. You know, <laughs> I don't. Except vote. Vote for somebody, man. Just vote don't. for somebody. Just don't yeah. be just. And also vote for somebody actually on the ballot. Don't be writing in people who's not in the top two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't no. vote and write in Kanye. Don't write in Harambe. Vote for one of the people who are actually on the ballots. Okay? Yes. Okay. I said, I said, I said, oh, Kanye not up here. <laughs> <laughs> like I always say, stay black girl lit. Stay black girl lit, y'all. Okay? Bye. Goodbye for now. That's it for today's show. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating and a top-notch review to get us to the top review page on iTunes. And be sure to follow us and listen on SoundCloud.